All right, you've got a homework assignment to create a vector data structure and to write some functions to manipulate that information. All right, we've got a code blocks project up here with a set of comments that says the purpose of this file is to create a vector data structure and I remind you that vectors have magnitude and direction. Well, in this case, we're going to create a two dimensional right, vector. So we have two data members, we have the X component and the Y component, but a three dimensional vector would have X, Y, and Z, but we're just going to work with a simpler case of two dimensions. So to create that data structure, there's different ways to do it. We're going to use type def. So type definition, struct, and then we'll define the data members in here. They can have different data types since we're going to represent a coordinate system. Let's assume that they won't all be integers and let's make them double. So X will be a double and Y will be a double. All right. And we just have these two data members and then we'll name this type vector. All right. There's our structure. All right. Now, if we want to create then variables or identifiers of type vector, let's do so inside main. So let's then create a vector, right, that we'll name, let's go with vector v0, right, and what we did here was we declared an identifier named v0 of data type vector, right? And so v0 has two members, v0.x, v0.y. They're not initialized to anything, they just have garbage values in them, right? If we want to initialize them, so let's initialize v0's data members, well, we can pick any point in the coordinate system. Let's just say that v0.x, let's set that equal to 3. Right? And v0.y, we'll set equal to 4. Right? And so th these vectors are in relation to the origin, the 0, 0 point of the coordinate system. Right? Now, another way we could declare a variable and initialize using an initializer list is as follows. So let's put a comment, declare a vector variable. Okay use an initializer list, right? So if we have our data types vector, let's name this one v1, and then if we use an initializer list, well, we could just say, uh, let's put this one in uh, the opposite quadrant. So quadrant four would be minus three minus four. If we do that, that's an ordered connection where v1.x will get negative three, v1.y will get negative four. Or we can use then this name connection here where we can say dot x should receive minus three, dot y, we want to assign minus four. I prefer this method because I know exactly which variable will get assigned what number. All right, it's a little more clear when I read it. All right, so we've seen then different ways to declare ver vector variables and initialize them. What if we wanted to just print out the data in there? So let's, let's uh, print the values stored in v0 and v1. Well, we can just simply do that with a printout. I can now say something like, uh, let's put these on a new line, v0.x, and let's Let's see, uh, they're doubles. Uh, let's just limit them to maybe two decimal points. And v zero dot y, 7.2f, and substituting in there, v zero dot x, v zero dot y, right, to access the individual data members. And then we can do the same thing as well with v1. Let's do a little copy paste here. All right, I'll change this to V1. V1. 
one. All right, and if we just build and run. We have that information printed out. Now I can do a better job of aligning this by controlling my field width. But you see then the method we use to initialize these, and in this case, to access each one of these data members with the dot operator in order to read this. All right. Now instead of printing this out here, part of your homework assignment is you're going to write several functions that work with vectors. So let's write a function then that just prints the information. Let's write a function called print vector data. All right, it won't return anything, so we'll call this print vector data. And it's going to need then a vector variable, right? So since we use the type def, data type will be, we'll say just vector v, right? And then in here, right, we want to do something very similar to what we did down below with the print f, right? And if I want to label this, maybe I'll just say x, right? percent oh, let's just go with um, 9.2 f since they're doubles and then y percent 9.2 f maybe we'll do print each one on its own line and then to access this right, we reference the identifier with the name v so simply v dot x v dot y and now, instead of doing this here, I'm just going to call the print function. So print vector data. If I pass this v0, we'll see the v0 information. Print vector data, print v1. I won't have a label to indicate which is v0 and v1. So if I say build and run, right, this pops up just simply our x and y. So if I want some labels as to what is V0, what is V1, right? I might have to do something like this. I might just want to say print F V0, V0 data. Print that label here. V1 data. Build and run. All right. So I've got some labels, and there's other things you can do to format this a little more nicely. Maybe instead of doing this. Maybe I would just do that, get rid of the new line character. All right, and that's all on the same line. All right. So we declared, we actually created this type definition vector. It has two data members. They're both of type double X and Y. We wrote a function to print out that information. We see then how to call the function, right? I'm simply going to pass this vector, and it passes a copy of that information to this function, right? And prints that out. All right, let's write one more function in this example. Right? One of the other things you're asked to do in your homework, we commonly calculate then the magnitude of a vector. All right, so we could say, find the magnitude of each vector, right? So the magnitude of the vector is, right, magnitude is equal to the square root, it's the square root of x squared plus y squared. Let's then, We'll call it mag zero for magnitude zero. Right. And in this case, then we're going to find V zero. 
So there is a square root function in the math library. We'll have to include the math library, but we could simply say the square root of then v0 dot x times v0 dot x, right? We want to add to that, I want to square v0 dot y times v0 dot y. And now I need to include standard io dot h. I hadn't done that. Code blocks was nice enough to know what I was doing and have our program run appropriately. I, I ignored the warnings that were flying by, which was not a good thing to do. Right. We compile now. We're gonna get a warning about the fact we have this unused ver variable mag zero. So let's just go ahead and print out, right? The magnitude of V zero. So we'll just say magnitude of V zero is, right, and that's a double, again, 9.2F. And new line, and then we'll just print out mag zero. Right. And now if we build and run that, all right, we're still printing out these, this information, right? We see the magnitude of V zero is five, right? That is the length of the vector from the origin to this point three, four. And that should seem familiar, right? It's just simply your three, four, five triangle by the Pythagorean theorem. Right. We just calculated then the magnitude of the vector. Right. Now we can do the same thing then for the other vector, but if we want to use, we want to perform this calculation for several vectors, we'll write a function to do that. Let's go ahead and write a function then. Right. And so vector magnitude, we'll call that. And that's going to require then right, a vector B. And what we can do here is this is a one liner really. We're just going to return the square root of well b dot x times b dot x plus b dot y times b dot y. It's a very simple function. Now that data type it returns is a double. Right? And so now here, instead of having this variable, mag zero, right? I'm just going to get rid of that declaration. I'm just going to call the function that we just created, which is vector magnitude, and I'm going to pass that v zero. All right, let's build and run, see if we just don't get the same information. We should. All right, we wrote it correctly. We got the same information, All right? And then we can calculate the magnitude of V1 if we wanted. All right, so a little copy paste magic there. All right, we've got V1. And now when we build and run this, right, right, we get what we expect. The magnitude of both of these vectors is the same, right? They're in different quadrants, right? V0 is in quadrant one, V1 is in quadrant four because both X and Y. Uh, sorry, V1 is in quadrant three because both X and Y are negative values, but because we square these negative values, their magnitude is still the same. All right, so here's an example then, starting you on your vector homework, creating the structure, creating a function to print out the information, another function to calculate magnitude. All right. Let's just go ahead and stop here. The next step will be discussing how we create multiple files in a C program. That will be in your next tutorial.